SEC on ESPN. The Georgia Lady Bulldogs are in Lexington to take on the 10th ranked Kentucky Wildcats. The Wildcats have won 25 straight games in this building. It is very early in the SEC. Both of these teams were predicted to finish in the top four. Georgia won its SEC opener last Sunday against South Carolina. And for the third straight season, Kentucky lost its SEC opener, falling at 25th ranked Arkansas on Thursday. And good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sam Gore, honored to be alongside former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson. LaChina, I mentioned the 25-game home win streak for Kentucky, but this is the SEC, and Georgia is the last team that won here. This is the SEC, and that's why we're going to see speed on offense and pressure on defense. Kentucky's trying to right the ship after two losses in a row. Georgia riding high after an impressive defensive outing against South Carolina. Well, let's take a look at our star watch this afternoon. Victoria Dunlap, the reigning SEC Player of the Year. Her defensive pressure is major in creating energy for Matthew Mitchell's team. And for Georgia, the lone senior, Portia Phillips, her rebounding been the backbone for Georgia so far this year. She has 80 more rebounds than any other player on her squad. Now let's take a look at our starting lineups this afternoon for Georgia. A very young squad, Miller, James, Mitchell, Hassel, and Phillips for Kentucky. Kentucky's had trouble settling on a starting lineup with China, but they finally, for the last three games, gone with Mathis, who was the SEC Freshman of the Year last year, Snowden, who leads the league in three-point shooting, Conright, a freshman, Drake, and then Dunlap, of course, an All-American. Well, when you're trying to find out what you want to do at point guard, that can complicate things quite a bit, but you're right, Matthew Mitchell, starting to get into a rhythm. And you mentioned what you do at point guard. The reason you brought that comment up is Kentucky is without its original starting point guard, Amber Smith, who's out with a knee injury. There is Andy Landers, the Georgia legendary head coach, the one and only coach for this program in his 32nd season. You see he's already gotten over 750 wins. He won 750 last year in the NCAA tournament when he took this program again to the Sweet 16. Georgia has been to five Final Fours and won seven SEC championships under Andy Landers. And on the other side of the court, an up-and-comer perhaps, Matthew Mitchell, the reigning SEC Coach of the Year, who guided this program to the program's best year in history last season, making the Elite Eight, winning more games than they had ever done, 28 in a season. The future looks very bright for Matthew Mitchell in this Kentucky program. And Coach Mitchell has said over and over he's building this program on honesty, discipline, and hard work. And he wants to see his team work harder than they did in their loss at Arkansas. Coach Mitchell asking the Wildcats to play with passion. Phillips and Dunlap are star watch athletes jumping in the center circle. We're underway in Memorial Coliseum here in Lexington, Kentucky. You can see that Georgia is going to start out in their man-to-man. -man. Tremendous amount of pressure trying to get Kentucky to turn the ball over and get into transition. Conright takes the first shot of the game. And not surprisingly, Phillips grabs the rebound. A great rebounder. She averages a double-double this year, 12 points and 11 rebounds per game. And it's pure hard, a lot of it. I mean, Phillips is 6'2", is undersized against most posts that she's played against but she's just determined. Mitchell missed the layup. Mathis! Last year's SEC Freshman of the Year, this year considered to be an All-American candidate. And you have to know that Kentucky is going to attack the rim first. That is their first offensive option. Attack the rim no matter who has the ball. Mathis does exactly that. Mitchell takes her second shot, and this one is good. Meredith Mitchell, the junior from Midfield, Alabama. And here we go, Snowden on the other end. On the drive, Miller. And Georgia has its first lead. Sam, already we feel the tempo of this game is very high. Both of these teams are going to try to get into transition, get up and down the floor, a tremendous amount of pressure. I can't say that enough defensively. Well, the Matthew Mitchell style is aggression and transition. What about Georgia? Can they run with Kentucky? Absolutely. I mean, Georgia has got some of the quickest guards in the SEC. You talk about foot speed. Jasmine James is definitely one of the fastest you will see. James just missed the layup on the other end. Kentucky trying to tie or take the lead here early. 
Drake backs in, the left-hander is good. And that is an important basket for Kentucky. They're trying to find additional scoring. Everyone is going to try to shut down Mathis and Dunlap, their first and second option. They need other players. Snowden has been consistent, but if they can get some inside scoring in the post, Drake is going to be it. Two freshmen in that Kentucky starting lineup, Drake and Conright. George has been off since last Sunday's win over South Carolina, and Mitchell has got the green light here early. She's taken all three shots, or three of the four shots by Georgia, hitting on two. Roberta started the season struggling from the floor, only shooting 29% in the last eight games. 46% from the floor for Meredith. And Mathis has been equally impressive, her fourth point. And you see how far Megan Conright is pushing Jasmine James out. She's going to keep that pressure out, trying to keep Georgia from running their sets. I love Matthew Mitchell's quote. He said, we try to make every possession a desperate situation for our opponent. Shot clock was down to six there. And Kentucky can take the lead. We're tied at six. Mathis, who's had the hot hand, off the mark. Offensive rebound by Drake. Coach Mitchell said in the pregame speech he wanted 10 offensive rebounds by halftime. He got one there and a basket. Offensive foul as Hassel came out and can committed an illegal screen. So it'll be Kentucky's basketball and substitutions coming in right away for Matthew Mitchell, who goes very deep. And he will go deep early. He will go deep. I've seen him go as deep as nine in the first 10 minutes of the game. Now Jennifer O'Neill, one of the players inserted in the lineup, bringing it up right now for the Wildcats. She's a freshman from the Bronx. And Kentucky's first McDonald's All-American, so very special player in terms of her recruiting class. Evans, the other newcomer on the floor for Kentucky, number 32. Steal by Mitchell. Intercepted the Drake pass. And Phillips took steps. At that time, Georgia looks to go inside to Phillips. In a lot of their half-court sets, she's going to be your first option, whether it's off of the back screen or flex screen. They want to try to get her open, but they've done a great job with Meredith Mitchell coming off the screens there, getting shots from the high post. Now, both of these programs, the future looks very bright. A lot of talented newcomers on both squads. Entry pass forced by Mathis. Georgia on the break. Miller. And we're tied at eight. Kalita Miller is the reigning SEC freshman of the week after scoring 15 points in her first SEC game against South Carolina. I asked her, I said, is that what you expected SEC play to be like? She said, well, hey, I was happy with my shots, put them up. It was a good night for me. Drake battling hard inside, draws the foul. She will be on the free throw line when we return to Memorial Coliseum, one of the most historic venues in college basketball. Adia Mathis lighting it up early for Kentucky. She's got four points.
ESPN News exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Buffalo Wild Wings. You have to be here. Well, things even here to start this SEC regular season matchup. Kentucky and Georgia tied at eight. Matthew Mitchell had to do a lot of extra coaching when his point guard went down Amber Smith in the preseason with a could be a season ending knee injury. Not sure yet. And he's had to do a lot of juggling in this lineup trying to find a point guard. Here's what he lost. Not just the nine points per game, but Smith is definitely a leader. I mean, nine assists a game. She is the floor general for this Kentucky team. Even though she's out, you can still see her coaching. All her teammates say she's the next coach, Division One coach for her squad. But it's something when you have to replace a player. It's really something when you have to replace a floor general, a leader, point guard, someone who has been running your team in Matthew Mitchell having to pull a freshman out and put them in that spot. So that's a difficult position. And a freshman on the free throw line right now, Samantha Drake, who's hit 64% of her free throws so far this year. Here's the class breakdown for Kentucky. Six freshmen, which is just under the total amount of classes put together. Drake makes one of two. I do like, though, LaChina, that a freshman stepped up and asked for that point guard role. Megan Conright went to Matthew Mitchell as a freshman and said, give me a shot, coach. Well, he recruited her as a defensive stopper, so not even necessarily as a point guard, and she did want to step up to the challenge and said, hey, whatever shoes need to be filled, I can fill it. We see her in the starting lineup as a result. Steal by Dunlap, no basket off of it. As the shot is missed by O'Neal Dunlap, one of the best in the nation at steals. Mitchell, who's had the hot hand, misses this. Gets her own rebound twice and misses both attempts. And that is the Meredith Mitchell that we are familiar with seeing in the Georgia uniform. She struggled a little bit early this season. She said she thinks that her rebounding was a problem, not getting after the board. She was less aggressive. And Mitchell this time took the inbounds pass and took an extra step. Andy Landers in his 32nd season here, a Hall of Famer, was inducted into the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame back in 2007. And this young Georgia team uh, has rejuvenated him, so to speak. He likes working with all these youngsters. Evans drives, gets the layup. Castine Evans, whose minutes have been limited the last couple of games because of a stomach flu. It's been a tough week for Kentucky basketball at China. They lost at Duke earlier in the week and fell at Arkansas. A little bit of a hangover effect, not to take away anything from Arkansas. But that's a difficult stretch. We talked about two top 25 teams back to back, one day in between for prep. Nice move there by Portia Phillips. And then contact as Phillips tried to take the charge and was successful. And that is a freshman point guard in a senior post here. Look at Phillips, just good footwork there, gets in position, and O'Neal charges into it. A freshman mistake there. A good veteran move by Phillips. Portia Phillips, such an incredible athlete, called the most athletic power player ever to play at Georgia, and that's saying a lot. This Georgia program has had a pipeline of players into the WNBA and at the next level. And look at the ball pressure right here from Kentucky. Shot clock under 10. James and the rebound taken by Dunlap. We talked about the point guards for Kentucky. One of the differences that you will see, Sam, is that O'Neal is more of an offensive point guard where Conright is more of a defensive point guard. She said she was coming to Kentucky because she wanted to be a defensive stopper. <laughs> Phillips commits the foul. Amory Armstrong into the Bulldog lineup. And as Hassel goes to the bench. And it'll be Kentucky basketball. Dunlap also exiting the game. And she's replaced by Henderson, number 40. Drive to the basket. Shot missed. Very good rebound by Amory Armstrong. Most uh, fans, Bulldog fans, are used to seeing her exclusively at the three position. That's where she played most of last year. This year she's playing in the four and five spots, so doing a great job of going after the boards, but also extending the defense in the three-point line. Conright with the steal and wisely slows it down. Nothing was there. 
she'll pull. O'Neal misses, and the ball will stay with Kentucky. Well, later tonight, ESPNU delivers a special version of the experts. Get ready for the BCS National Championship, everyone. Join our experts as they provide unfiltered conversation about college football's marquee event, the experts. BCS National Championship on ESPNU tonight at 1030. Morrow misses the shot out of the inbounds pass, and a jump ball called under the basket off the rebound. And the ball will go to Georgia. The rebounding is going to be a key stat in this game today. Georgia, very impressive. Though they are undersized, they have a plus 10 rebounding margin. I mean, a lot of that is because of Phillips, but just hustling, getting extra opportunities for the Bulldogs has brought them success this year. Full court pressure by Kentucky. Georgia the Mila China seems to have a lot of interchangeable parts. Players that can go to many different spots on the floor. Offensive rebound and stick back by Phillips. They do, and that gives Coach Landers the chance to switch up his lineup depending on who he's playing. If there's a smaller post, he can put some guards down there and vice versa. So he can do a little bit of everything depending on who he's playing. Megan Conright buries the three-pointer, first of the game for either team. And Kentucky's up two. Kentucky really pressing. You see Con right there. The pursuit of the basketball by Kentucky in a full court situation is something to watch. Matthew Mitchell in his fourth season as the head coach at Kentucky. James looking to get it in. And finally gets it in just as that count got to four. This is Anne Marie Armstrong. And she goes strong to the bucket, draws the foul. Armstrong, one of those uh, great athletes in the Georgia program. She could have played at the next level collegiately in a lot of different sports. Let's look at that last play. And she sees the defense out on her. B. Henderson, not as quick as Anne Marie. And that's what you talked about, those interchangeable pieces. When you put Armstrong at the fourth spot, she is tough to guard because she can shoot the three, but she's also quick off of the dribble. Now 8 of 16 from the free throw line this season. Armstrong, a two-time Georgia Miss Basketball. In fact, the Georgia program has the last three Miss Basketballs from the state of Georgia. Two won by Armstrong, and the other was Miller last year, Kalita Miller. But Armstrong, an incredible athlete in high school, and three state titles in volleyball, three in volleyball, three in basketball, four in track. And she was everything athletically and uh, an excellent student as well. well. That volleyball explains why she was able to bounce back off of the floor so easily. Fifth tie of the game, Morrow gets bumped, does not get the call, however, misses the three. Here comes Georgia. Miller, last year's Georgia miss basketball, gets her first bucket. And Georgia up two. Georgia picking up. You see Jasmine James here on Dunlap. Can they get the trap? And they do. Dunlap throws it off of Mitchell. Well, you're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's a close one here in Lexington. Georgia trying to end the 25-game home win streak of Kentucky.
Well, Andy Landers and the Lady Bulldogs up two here early in the opening half. ESPN is the home court of college hoops. Coverage continues on ESPNU Tuesday night. We've got a doubleheader coming your way. Action will begin with an SEC showdown at 7 Eastern. Auburn against 11th ranked Kentucky. Again, this is on the men's side. Then at 9 Eastern, we transition to the ACC. The North Carolina State Wolfpack take on Boston College. That's college basketball on ESPNU. Tuesday, the SEC and ACC. Well, tough week for this Kentucky program in general, but the men losing yesterday to Georgia. Here's a look at the early SEC East standings in men's basketball. Big win yesterday for the Bulldogs over Kentucky. And it, it's been a, a tough week for Kentucky Athletics, losing the bowl game yesterday, losing the men's basketball game. The, the ladies here today said they want to start the week out with a win and not drop this 25-game home win streak they've got going. Last team to win was Georgia here in Memorial Coliseum. That was in February of 2009. And Drake bobbles the inbounds pass and will turn it over, something that Kentucky does not do much of. You don't really want to inbound the ball to your five players, especially on the perimeter, because sometimes, depending on who it is, they're not comfortable handling the ball out there. So that's a tough turn over there for the Wildcats. Hassel harassed by Drake. And an offensive foul, another illegal screen down low. This one's on Hassel. And Hassel got her first foul that same exact way, setting the screen in that play for Meredith Mitchell to come to the top of the key. And what she's trying to do is she's trying to set the screen and then open. You want your post player to roll in case there's a high-low opportunity, but she's moving a little bit too fast. Well, unfortunately for her, she rolls on over to the bench. Tamika Willis replaces her as Hassel goes out with two fouls. Five team fouls now on Georgia. Just two for Kentucky. O'Neal on the drive. No shot. Three seconds. Drake and Dunlap were both camped out down low. And you saw defensively in that possession, George is going to trap on some of the pick and roll, so we'll look to see how Kentucky plays that as the afternoon goes on. Armstrong knocks down the three-pointer. She hit a three at the buzzer to beat TCU earlier this year. And Georgia has its biggest lead. And Georgia shooting the ball very well from the floor right now. Phillips is two for two. Khalida Miller three for three. So they're getting good shots and putting them in, in here early. As a team, eight of 15 are the Lady Bulldogs. And James took a step before she put her dribble down. And that'll be the seventh turnover of the afternoon committed by the Lady Bulldogs. And James has a tough time against Kentucky in her career. She's only shooting 22% against uh, the Wildcats. And I think that the Kentucky defense is tougher for a point guard because not only do you have to run the team, and she's also a scoring option, but you've got to read defense. You've got a very difficult job against the Wildcats. That's why Matthew Mitchell needs this team to play with passion. You, you can't go all out full court pressure without passion, can you? Not at all. Shot missed by Snowden. It was touched by Georgia. An ambitious pass there for Phillips. Goes over the goal. And that was a run out by our Star Watch players, Dunlap and Phillips. That is going to be fun to watch this afternoon. Both of those players are just very athletic quick off of the ground. I mean, when rebounds go up, they are the first players you see to the ball. So they're going to be fun to watch competing against each other this afternoon. They began the game in the jump circle, guarding each other now. And look at the pressure again. Kentucky trying to push Georgia out, not letting them get into their sets. This is Willis to Mitchell. Five on the shot clock. Rebound by Dunlap. O'Neal this time a little too quick. Nothing there for Phillips. Can she create something? And the ball will go to Kentucky. As a 
substitution now will come in as Kentucky will get the inbound at Dunlap. I, for a second, I thought Kentucky called the timeout there. But it was just out of bounds on Georgia. I like the way that Georgia is running their break, Sam. On that last play, they are running wide on their wings, getting their post to the rim. That's why they're having success in their shooting percentage from the field so far. They're having trouble turning the ball over, however. That is the eighth turnover against Kentucky. They average 16 as a team, and they normally force 26. Now this Kentucky team on a two-game losing streak for the first time this season. So they're in uh, uncharted waters here they don't want to be in. And you mentioned the turnovers. They usually force 26 a game. They only force 17 against Arkansas and 19 against Duke. So they've got to get over that 20 mark and start to get it around 20, 25. It's going to be harder as you get into conference, but that's what makes their offense go. Drake commits the foul. Willis will go to the free throw line, a sophomore from College Park, Maryland. And uh, now they're not going to put her on the free throw line. Pinkett into the game, so Matthew Mitchell is going very deep here in the first half. James will inbound it. Phillips draws the foul. And she will go to the free throw line. Portia Phillips with a very nice move inside. You see her face up a lot on the baseline, but she still has a plethora of back to the basket moves. We saw one there, and she is strong and a lot to handle inside. Phillips started her career at LSU, was a big contributor on the Final Four team in 2007. A rare missed free throw. She shoots 88% this year, but hasn't been to the line all that much. So, not, in fact, not enough to be ranked. Phillips had 19 boards in a game early this year against Southern Cal, the most that any Georgia player has had since 1986. Now, you know the, the great rebounders that have played at the University of Georgia since then, so that is quite a mark for the senior. Well, the Lady Bulldogs on an 8-0 run right now as Kentucky tries to end that. And another Kentucky turnover. Kentucky struggling with their chemistry on offense right now in the half court. That's the second miscue for the Wildcats on that end of the ball. Ransford, freshman from Washington, D.C. Shot clock again under 10. James puts up the three. And it'll go to Kentucky with 8.06 left in the half. And that is good defense by Kentucky in the half court. And that's what they're going to have to do against Georgia because Georgia's been getting out in transition. But when they get in the half court, they've got to get in the passing lane, get up and really defend. Kentucky desperate for a basket. And the fans here trying to get the Wildcats going. Conright, who hit a three earlier. This one goes over the goal, and it will be Georgia's basketball. Matthew Mitchell furious right now, hoping to avoid a three-game losing streak. Down six in the first half.
Well, Georgia up by six with 748 left in the half with China. We've talked about Kentucky in transition, but Georgia has been very effective in transition here in this opening half. The Bulldogs getting a lot of looks on the run out. What they are doing is playing good defense, rebounding, and then watch this. Watch how a player just gets out and gets long on the wing. That's Kalita Miller there leading the charge. But when you have a player up the floor, then it's easy to get easy baskets. And watch here again, Kalita Miller, the freshman, getting out. Great finish there for Georgia. Miller has not missed a shot. She's got six points. Andy Landers enjoying coaching this team led by Portia Phillips. You know, we talked about Star Watch, Phillips and Dunlap. Well, off the court, those two have something in common. They both have brothers that are professional athletes. You know, Phillips' brothers are professional baseball players, and Dunlap's brother, King, is going to play for the Philadelphia Eagles today against the Packers. He's an offensive lineman. And the key in that is that when you have older brothers and you're the girl growing <laughs> up in the family, you have no choice but to be an athlete because you're going to get pushed and shoved around and you're going to have to bow up at some point. And so both of them have uh, some athletes in the family. Good steal by Dunlap. And then Dunlap commits the turnover. Mitchell with the alley-oop pass and basket by Phillips. Terrific finish by Portia Phillips. She just trusts her teammate there. You've got one senior and one junior on your team, and they connect right there. You've got to think the chemistry between them over the years has been developed, and we saw it there. Well, let's take another look. Dunlap has tried to do a little too much there in the half court. Mitchell sprinting out, and Portia Phillips from the left side. Nice finish. James just committed the foul as we see the finish of that last play. Kentucky inbounding off that foul call. Morrow, who's been struggling with her shot, she also had that stomach flu. Nice pass down low by Mathis, but Drake gets it blocked. Victoria Dunlap. Coach Mitchell challenging her earlier to step out today and be the spark for this team. And so far, Dunlap's had trouble getting going. Has not scored. And that's what Kentucky is missing, a spark. That energy, that vocal player. That's what they used to get from Amber Smith. And they're just trying to find a way to replace that. It's a difficult position to put a freshman in. And I think an upperclassman, someone with experience, should be the one to take on that role. Jasmine James with a nice one-on-one -on -one move. But the shot clock was under five. Georgia up by ten. A 12-0 run by the Lady Bulldogs. And the first double-digit lead of the game. Mathis looking for contact, did not get it. However, Armstrong did touch the ball, so it'll stay with Kentucky. And Matthew Mitchell wants a 30-second timeout over on that Kentucky bench. He is not happy with the, uh, the way this game is going. And how tough is it? China. This is a, a, a young team to begin with, without a point guard. They played Duke so incredibly well the other night and then lost that heartbreaker by six. It, it, it's very difficult. And then to go on and lose at Arkansas. You know, in that Duke game, they held Duke to 27% shooting. And that's hard to do at Cameron Indoor. So a lot of effort. Then you lose on a tip-in. <laughs> I don't know that I mean I don't know that I've ever seen that, but the ball just tipped in by Victoria Dunlap and Duke gets two points. So emotionally exhausting. And then you go to Arkansas, a team that was just on a vengeance. They had just lost to Florida. You know, Coach Tom Collin has that team playing well. And you get one day prep in between. So yeah. very difficult. So this Kentucky team uh, trying to find itself again. They've been in the top ten pretty much all season. You gotta figure that ranking will drop a little as a result of those two losses this week that it would really tumble if they fall here to Georgia. And Georgia's trying to get back into the top 25. Conright has it knocked away from behind by James. And the reason why Coach Mitchell wanted that timeout is they have not had a lot of success in the half court here. Uh, Kentucky has not, so he wants to set up something to make sure they get a good look and a score down 10 points at home. Drake has it taken away. James strips her underneath. Phillips on the low block. 
is fouled. Drake and Dunlap were both there. And the foul is going to go against Dunlap. Well, later tonight, remember, ESPN U delivers a special version of the experts to get fans ready for the BCS National Championship. Join our experts as they provide unfiltered conversation about college football's marquee event, the experts, BCS National Championship on ESPN U tonight at 1030 Eastern. Phillips on the free throw line for Georgia. Trying to give Georgia an 11 point lead here with 543 left in the half and gets this one to go down. Portia Phillips, seven points here in the first half. Henderson cannot end the scoring drought for Kentucky. And Adia Mathis has been quiet for the Wildcats. Keep in mind that Meredith Mitchell has her defensive assignment, and Meredith is one of the better defenders in the SEC, definitely the best guard defender for Georgia. Dunlap's been good defensively. Another steal and an offensive foul. As waiting on her was Jasmine James in the lane. And that's just frustration by Victoria Dunlap. Watch this here. She wants to make something happen. This is your senior leader understanding the need to score right there. Just gets too excited and great defensive play there for James to step in and get the charge. Georgia trying to build on its 11-point lead. Pull off the upset here in Lexington. Georgia was the last team to win in this building, but it hasn't happened since 2009. Kentucky on a 25-game home win streak. And Phillips loses it off of her foot. And it's it's not rare that a team coming off of two losses would be in a little bit of a funk. You know, I expected Kentucky, they're at home, they're trying to, to get out of this, you know, they've had a tough couple of games. And so right now they're just trying to find their way again. They need to find their confidence, and that might do it. Victoria Dunlap. Dunlap makes the jumper from the top of the key to end the scoring run by Georgia. Kentucky had not scored since 12 minutes and 40 seconds in this half. Armstrong travels. And this is a very nice crowd here at Memorial Coliseum. And if they can get going and get some energy behind this team, Kentucky has sold more season tickets this yeah. season than they ever have, over 5,000. So this crowd can get into it and help to create some energy here before the end of the half. They average just under 6,100 fans a game. And these fans have seen this 25-game home win streak. Another bucket. This one comes down low from Mathis. So Dunlap and Mathis, your two best players, have scored on the last two possessions for Kentucky. They're starting to take over. They understand the need right here for the Wildcats to make a push. A reach-in foul on O'Neal stops the clock with 3.49 left to play in the opening half. Kentucky showing some life, but Georgia up by seven.
Well, the Lady Bulldogs have been up by as many as 11. That lead is now eight with 349 left in the first half. Half of our star watch today was Portia Phillips. Let's show you what she's done here in the opening half. Well, when you are on the road in the SEC, senior leadership is a must. And Portia Phillips has set the tone for this young Georgia team there with a plethora of moves, nice versatility, getting open in the break, running the floor. She's been impressive here early for Georgia. Yeah, Phillips with 8.6 rebounds. You compare that with the other half of our star watch. Victoria Dunlap, the preseason player of the year and reigning player of the year in the SEC. Dunlap, slow to get started. And you have to think that Georgia having the experience that they do at the point guard position with Jasmine James is helping them quite a bit to keep things facilitated. James did have to play the point guard some last year. Ashley Houts had an ankle injury. On the other end, Kentucky, again, relying on their youth. So they haven't been able to get to Dunlap and get her involved in the offense as much as they'd like to. Yeah, you mentioned Kentucky being without Amber Smith. Well, Ashley House, the player you just mentioned, graduated last year, went on to the WNBA. And uh, what a huge hole that was left to fill. But Georgia's had a history of producing outstanding point guards. And Jasmine James on the free throw line. Now there's Amber Smith, who's in the knee brace, but she is doing a little bit of work during practice, just in terms of shooting, not, not any running though. And still no word whether she'll return this year. Free throw is missed. Riley in the game for the first time. And Riley will assume the point guard responsibilities here for Kentucky. So we've now seen three different players, all three freshmen at the point guard. As you see Amber Smith right there, again, still recovering from her ACL injury. But you're on your third point guard, and it's a freshman. Matthew Mitchell's got to have gray hair. Mathis was hoping she got fouled. However, she turns it over. And a travel violation called. And I'm surprised the, China, the number of turnovers we've had so far. Yeah, that's 13 now for Kentucky and 11 for Georgia. Pressure, pressure, pressure will make you turn the ball over, especially when you've got young backcourts, which both of these teams do. And I said Jasmine's got experience, but she's only a sophomore. Keep yeah. that in mind. She played a lot of minutes last year, but she's still young. Another turnover. Here's a look at the turnovers before that play. And that's what you can expect. Anytime these two teams hit the floor, forcing turnovers is a must. They do not want to play half-court offense. They want to force turnovers and get out in the run. And so both have stayed true to form somewhat so far this game. Kentucky trying to find it consistently. Nice one-on-one -on -one move. Mathis got separation, couldn't get the shot. Offensive rebound. Tries to stick it back in. That's her third shot of that possession. And finally will go to the free throw line. And that's where Audia Mathis can make a difference in this game. She's struggling with the matchup against Meredith Mitchell who again is one of the better defenders in the SEC, but watch the effort here. Relentless on the boards is Mathis with the pump fake, and she can play one through four, so she's not a stranger down there in the paint. She's been there before. Adia Mathis, last year's SEC freshman of the year. Kentucky's missed basketball a couple of years ago. She's a preseason first team all SEC selection this year. He's also on the preseason Naismith yeah. list, which is a huge honor. And I call Mathis the silent assassin. She doesn't say too <laughs> many words, but she gets it done. And it's going to take some leadership from her. She's also an underclassman, only a sophomore. But they need her to step up big here this afternoon. Mathis makes both free throws. She's got eight points, now gets a steal and throws it off Mitchell. Great offensive and defensive possession here by Mathis. Watch here, Audia not giving Meredith any space to catch the ball. That's that smothering defense that the Wildcats will put on you full court. Kentucky on a 6-0 run has reduced the 11-point lead to five as we head toward the final two minutes here in the opening half. Mathis got Mitchell to commit, and Henderson's there to clean it up. Great play by Audia Mathis. She just barely gets open against Meredith and then uses the pressure to beat her to the baseline and a great pass. Uh, Kentucky is coming to life.
Mitchell trying to create something, a foul on Kentucky. And the foul's on Mathis. As we look back here, Mathis again just beating the pressure. Good body control enough that when she jumps, she can still make a decision. You don't want to really jump to pass, but there she was fortunate as the defense came over to help. You had a wide open B. Henderson underneath the board. Both teams in the one and one now as Mitchell makes the front end, she'll get another. Georgia hasn't played in a week. They played South Carolina last Sunday and Mitchell had one of her better games of the season, 12 points and eight rebounds. Six of those were offensive. And so you can tell she's playing with a lot of confidence right now. This is the second. And Armstrong is over Conright's back to try to get that rebound. So we'll head back down to the other end, and Conright will be on the free throw line for one and one. Sam, as you mentioned, that by date, that can be a blessing in disguise, but for some teams, it can kind of screw with your chemistry. Georgia looks like they have benefited from it because they're very fresh here early this afternoon. When you have Jasmine James playing 35 minutes a game, and of course, Phillips playing 32. I mean, that break can really help as you get ready to really get into league play. Conright makes the front end. Uh, coming up at halftime, Lowell Galindo and Miles Simon will preview college basketball games coming up later this week. We'll also have the national women's basketball headlines. And I'm excited to see LaChina's top five players from across the country. <laughs> hey, it's an early prediction. Keep that in mind, very early. because You can't say too much before you get into conference play. James breaks the press. Nice pass from Armstrong to finish by Phillips. And that is a mismatch. 6-2 Phillips against 5-11 Car Carly Morrow inside. I like Georgia's composure on that last possession. Kentucky is playing with a lot more intensity now. And that was very good recognition. Morrow short, and Mathis can't save it. Well, this is a smaller lineup for Kentucky, so you have to wonder if Georgia's going to look to go inside to Portia Phillips. In this lineup, both Mathis and Conright have played at the fourth spot, so that makes your team very, very small. As we head toward the final minute, LaChina, anything surprise you from these, uh, this first half? Well, really, I, I, I'm not, I can't say I'm surprised um, by anything necessarily. However, I will say that both of these teams are starting to look very good on the offensive end early in conference play. Sometimes it takes you a while to get used to the pressure and the speed of SEC basketball, but I'm impressed with the show on the offensive end. Mitchell made a three, and then Miller completes a five-point unanswered run by the Lady Bulldogs. So wow, just like that, Georgia scores five unanswered points and rebuilds the lead to nine. And that's momentum, momentum. Watch here, play by the freshman, Kalita Miller. And we've seen her do this quite a bit this afternoon. She finishes so well around the rim. We mentioned that young, smaller lineup in for Kentucky and a couple of miscues there in Georgia right back in the lead. Miller, the current SEC Freshman of the Week. She's got eight points, hasn't missed a shot. And we want to encourage you to participate in ESPNU College Town. Find your school, pick your buildings, recruit players, challenge your friends across the country to see whose program is number one. More than four million users, including a couple in my house, have started constructing their campus. Go to bethedean.com now to start playing. My, my kids love that. <laughs> That was a lot of fun. Georgia, going back, Sam, you know, Georgia has really impressed me on the offensive end. You know, you look at last season, and they did have the luxury of having Ashley Houts at point, but they're actually shooting the ball better this season from the floor, you know, and I just like their chemistry and their togetherness. Georgia's made 54% of their shots here in the first half. Kentucky trying to answer. Mathis misses the drive. Henderson had the offensive rebound and was fouled on the way back up. And that is a nice play by Audia Mathis, but she wasn't able to finish. She splits the double team out at the top of the key down the middle. That's where she likes to go. But watch this, wasn't able to finish, but good rebound there by B. Henderson. 
And Matthew Mitchell said, hey, it's going to come down to rebounding. So everyone's going to have to get involved. Anderson, 72% Californian. His sister, Tierra, played at UCLA. And she was voted by the team the player most likely to have a breakout season. Yeah. So we may not have seen the best of what, who they call be hit quite yet. <laughs> well, she made both free throws there. And Kentucky down by seven with 31 seconds left in this half. Kentucky has a 25 game home win streak, but has lost three game or two games in a row this week. And forces the turnover. I told you we'd see foot speed. Well, that was foot speed. Jasmine James against Crystal Riley, two of the faster players on each of these rosters, battling it out in Kentucky. Doing a great job getting possession. They'll get a chance here to get a score before the end of the half. Final 30 seconds. And George is in a 1-1-3 one, one, here, switching up things defensively. The three is good from the corner by Castine Evans. Final 10 seconds of the half. And Drake, excuse me, Evans cannot save it. It'll be Georgia's basketball, 4.2 seconds left. And I thought that Kentucky was going to work the clock all the way down. But Evans gets a good, nice open shot. Now, if they can get a stop here, and not allow Georgia to have the momentum going in. It'll be a great stretch here for the Wildcats. Well, you said it, momentum, momentum, momentum. We've had a lot of swings here. Armstrong to Mitchell at the buzzer. It won't go. And a very competitive first half comes to an end. Georgia will head into the dressing room leading by four. Here's our Star Watch update. Is it good news or bad news, Dunlap's only got two points and three rebounds for Georgia? Not very good news for the Wildcats. They're going to need Victoria Dunlap to get involved in the second half. So not good news for the Wildcats, but good news for the Lady Bulldogs that Dunlap has not been as productive as usual in our first half. But we will have 20 more minutes. Portia Phillips with 10.6 rebounds. Mitchell had eight points as well. When we come back, Lowe Galindo and Miles Simon will join you from the studio with a preview of games this week. Welcome into the ESPN3.com Halftime Report. I'm Cassidy Hubbard. Coming up, we'll go all access with Billy Donovan and the Florida Gators. But first, for the latest on what's happening in the college hoops world, let's send it over to the college basketball scoreboard crew. Guys, take it away. All right, Cassidy, joined by Hubert Davis and really one of the premier matchups of Saturday. It was hyped up, and for good reason. Number nine, UConn matching up against number 12, Texas. This game being played in Austin. Kemba Walker, of course, the nation's leading scorer, had a tough game in terms of his shooting percentage, but he hit some big shots when it counted. Couldn't get it to go there with the game tied at 73. Clock ticking here. Gary Johnson can't get it to go. 11 seconds to play. Orozco Smith heaves it. Hubert, why? We don't know why, but he played a terrific game for UConn. You are an optimist. He's suing Texas possession here. Jacobin Brown misses the jumper, which means we get some extra basketball. We're going to overtime in the extra session. Down at 77. Walker trying to make something happen. Anything happen. Uh, that's something. Even the three. That's some range there, Hubert. Under two minutes to play here. Texas down by one. Jordan Hamilton, he's got some game. 20 points, 11 rebounds for him. He's, he's improved so much. Not just shooting the ball from three-point range, but putting the ball on the floor. Tough shot. From Jordan Hamilton on the baseline. Speaking of tough shots, 10 seconds to go. Kemba Walker drilling the jumper. UConn up by one. Final play of the game here. Hurry Joseph initially blocked, gets it back, and that's all she wrote. UConn, a huge road win for them. 82 to 81, your final score. Now I'll keep it in the Big East here. Number 13, Georgetown matching up against West Virginia. Second half is where we pick it up. Hoy is down by three. Austin Freeman. Buckets get 11 points down at 50. Well, without Kimball Walker, Austin Freeman would probably be the front runner, uh, Big East Player of the Year. But Kevin Jones struggling at the beginning of the year, shooting ball from three-point range, stepping it up here, and then 
you see Georgetown get out in transition. Yeah, Jason Clark with the finish, team high 16 points. Hoy is down by one. Next, West Virginia possession, Darrell Bryant. Just three of 12 from the floor, but makes them when they count. Hoyas, they shot 50%, and they still lose. Taking a look at some other scores from the Big East. Syracuse, a winner, one of seven unbeatens heading into Saturday, and they stay that way. 61-56, a victory over Seton Hall and Pittsburgh. Well, they're actually going to match up against Georgetown next. They're a winner over Marquette, 89 to 81. So you see some surprises in the yeah. Big East and certainly a big win by UConn. What are you taking away from the games from Saturday? So well, far? in regards to UConn, it was fun watching Kimball Walker, um, especially last play. He really struggled from the field, but you could just see his development. He made plays that he wouldn't make as a freshman and as a sophomore and going up against probably one of the best on the ball defenders in Dolge Ball Bay, hit that game winning shot. It was fun watching UConn supporting cast step up. Roscoe Smith, uh, Shabazz Napier and double figures. Alex Oriaki had a double-double first time since yeah. uh, the Maui Invitational. And then in regards to uh, Georgetown, it's a talented basketball team that's struggling right now in two parts. One, they're, they're turning the ball over. They had 18 turnovers against West Virginia. And I don't think they get to the free throw line or not, uh, especially if the big three, Jason Clark, Chris Wright, and Austin Freeman, are not shooting the ball well from three-point range. They have to find a way to get to the line, and they're a good free throw shooting team. Yeah, certainly a tough time for Georgetown fans when you keep in mind the loss to West Virginia, not to mention Steve yeah. Lavin and St. John's, obviously a big Big win against them in their game before that as well. Uh, speaking of upsets, there were a few more from Saturday. John Calipari, Kentucky, matching up against Georgia. A well, first half play here, Terrence Jones. He's a freshman, not playing like one. 24 points out of 18 from the floor for him. Second half here, though, Bulldogs there on top. Travis Leslie, mm, a little facial there. Georgia up 43 to 32. Speaking of freshmen, Brandon Knight, he's pretty good, Hubert. Well, he can shoot from three, he can distribute the basketball, he can also go one on one. Another great point guard for John Calipari. He had 10 points in this game, tying it at 58 with the floater there. Under three minutes to go, Trey Tompkins. Tough jumper. Oh, I like it. How about this? Kentucky, they lose. They get upset. 77 to 70, your final score. Michigan State taking on Penn State. Second half is where we kick things up here. Delvin Rowe, tough lane in the lane, seven points. Sparty up by one, but this really a game for Penn State. Andrew Jones with the tip in, 16.7 attempt from the floor. In the end, we're still talking about a lot of Taylor battle down the stretch for the Nittany Lions. Well, he's a first team all Big Ten performer. Late clock situation, he has the ability to create his own shot. He was able to do that and Penn State beats Michigan State. Well, Darrell Summers actually had a chance to tie it. Ooh, off the mark. Huber, if that was you, I know you're drawing that in the corner. Not anymore. <laughs> Maybe 20 years ago. The range. Maybe. I'm telling you, it's still Maybe. Down. Number eight, Missouri matching up against Colorado. If you don't know Alec Burks, you know him now. Trust me, first half here, if there's one thing you can do, check out the lay-in. Man, he can score here. Well, Alex Burks is a big-time scorer. He really loves to put the ball on the floor, mid-range jump shot, take it to the rim. He was fantastic versus a Missouri team that is very good on the defensive end. Talking about fantastic, 36 points for him, a career high, not to mention the assists. Marcus Rutherford with the lay-in. And how about the shocker? Colorado, the upset Missouri. 89 to 76. Let's not forget a pretty important matchup Monday night on ESPN 8 Eastern Time. It's one versus two. Auburn matching up against Oregon. I know all eyes will be on that national title game. All right, that'll do it for us in studio. For Hubert Davis, I'm Mike M. Cassidy, it's all yours. Coming up after the break, we'll go all access with the Florida Gators and get to know how head coach Billy Donovan spends his off time away from the court. Stick around. You look fat in 3D. Oh, you mean fat with the PH? Nope. Contact your video provider or visit ESPN.com slash 3D. The BCS trophy looks really awesome in 3D. Yeah, totally elegant. Yeah. Makes me kind of wish we straightened up a little bit or something. Contact your video provider or visit ESPN.com slash 3D. What makes a house a home are the people who live there. Home, 
ESPN, the home court of college hoops. Welcome back. The Florida Gators were picked to win the stacked SEC East in the preseason. And after finishing fourth in division last season with a conference record of 9-7, and seven, head coach Billy Donovan has focused on managing his team's expectations. Earlier this season, ESPN got the chance to go all access for a day with the Gators head coach. Hi, I'm Billy Donovan, head coach of the Florida Gators. Join the Gator Radio Network and hear it like you've never seen it. The excitement of Florida Gator basketball all season long. You want me to stop in between each one, pause in between? Just no? a little bit. Okay. I mean, you know, it's a billboard. Okay. It's your billboards for radio. Yep. Okay. Catch all the action all season long. Hi, I'm Gator coach Billy Donovan. Keep up with the Gators on the all-new country 103.7, The Gator. Now let's go back to the show. Here's Mick Hubert. You're done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was it. That was it. That was what that Thanks, guys. Well, Billy, you know, I noticed your hair is getting a little long. Yeah. Uh, you've always kept it a little shaggy. So, uh, yeah. what are you gonna do about that? We're gonna go to this guy, Athletic Cuts. Okay. Chip, great guy. He uh, cuts Spurrier's hair, cuts Urban's hair, he's cut my hair, Ron Kruger's hair. You know, I've been coming to him since I've been here since 15 years. He's coming to get my hair cut. Chipper! Hey, Coach! How we doing? Good, how you doing? Everything well? Doing well, Coach. Good to see you. Two in the back. Super. Two in the back. Super. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Everything's going good. You doing good? Doing good, dude. All right, great, great. Andy, one of the great sculptors of all time here. Oh, Coach. Great. Hey, by the way, can Andy get in the chair after? He may need Andy's it. in the chair. Who's Andy? Yeah, Andy, right over here. But hey, I just got one. He's saying so he's I got mean, a haircut. Andy, <laughs> I'll take good care of you now. Now... <laughs> There isn't much to do here, is it? I just kind of let Chip do his thing there, and he tells me, you know what, I kind of like look like the way it looks, I don't like the way it looks, and then we kind of go with what he says. Now, how often have you ever had Billy in one chair, Urban in the other? Never. Never. You might have been here with Spur before. Spur, though. yeah. Spur, Spur, cross pass with Spur. Yeah, Spur didn't even think that. Really? Mm -hmm. Now, when you trim Spur, do you have to have the visor on or work around the visor? <laughs> Actually, he loved, let's take it off. He used to let me take it off, the visor. Right there. So who else we got up here? On the wall, oh, Bobby Stoops. Let's come through here. Bob Stoops? Bobby Stoops. Coach Stoops, I'm sorry. Okay. He always calls everybody by coach. Never, yeah, never, yeah. Always, always, everything's coach with him. Okay. Hey, not, not Bobby. You call him Bobby. Yeah, he won't do it. Now what about the players? Do the players come here, the current players? We see players from time to time. I just don't talk about current players too much, though. Um, they quick come see me. Um, Billy, you don't try to steer him over here? Um, like sometimes a freshman will say to me, you know, coach, I need to get a haircut. You know, is there, is there somewhere I should go? And I'm, you know, tell him to come over here. Okay. All right, Chipper. I got to ask you anything. I give you bucks? Fine, fine. No, we're sure? Okay. Fine. See you. Be good. All right. See, see you later. Have a good week. Right, okay, bye-bye. See you. See Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Hey. All right. Here we go. Well, Billy, it's been a couple of years now, even since uh, you took the Orlando job, went back to Florida. How long ago does that even feel? Um, you know, it's, it's, it seems a while ago, Andy, just because, you know, I knew that being back here in Florida, we were going to have to start over. Um, and, you know, I think a lot's happened and lots changed, um, you know, in our program, trying to get back to that point we were at. Um, but... You know, I think I've moved on. I think certainly Orlando's done great. They've moved on. Um, and it, it does definitely seemed like it was definitely a while ago um, for me. And, um, you know, and he, I think even the two national championships, although there's a lot of memories of those things, it was great. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's been two or three years, and I don't, they'll never leave you. And uh, they're always fresh in your mind. But at the same point, I think time keeps on moving. And, uh, you know, you just got to keep moving forward. So when you saw Tom Izzo going through that this summer, in that crazy weekend he had where he was debating something very similar. I mean, he built Michigan State into a national champion. You've done that at Florida. Uh, both programs, you could argue, even though they won it in 79, but are relative newcomers in the last decade to being title contenders. I mean, how much did you relate to what he was going through during that weekend? You know, I think uh, Tom's had some other opportunities like that that he's probably had to 
think about. Um, you know, the one thing that I thought Tom did a great job on, certainly I think the media and people and fans um, want immediate answers as soon as possible, and they want it to be over with. Um, and the one thing I thought that Tom did, you know, in really thinking about the decision was he took his time, you know, and a lot of people thought maybe unrealistically it got dragged on for so long. But, you know, when you're talking about making a decision of that magnitude, and I think we all understand as, co as, as coaches, there is a culture and an environment that when there is a coaching change, a lot of times in those coaching changes, they have to happen so quickly. And I respected the fact that Tom said, you know what, no, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to walk through this. I'm really going to think about this. And however long it takes for me to get to the point where I'm at peace with whatever decision I make, I'm going to do that. And I'm sure trying to figure out LeBron's situation had a lot to do with that as well um, when he made the decision. When you've invested, you know, 14 years of your life at a place and you've given your heart and soul to it and you're uh, rooted in the community and you're rooted there in your program. And that was the one thing I even think even for me is, you know, when, you, when you're at a place for 11 years and you've given your heart and soul and you really have been, a, uh, you know, overwhelmed with the process of getting to that point you know sometimes those decisions just don't happen in a 36 hour period and and uh, you know I think the thing I respected that Tom did was Tom wanted his own pace and really probably took the, 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 the adequate enough time for him to make the best possible decision for himself and um, but I could definitely understand everything he was going through. That's a wrap on the ESPN3.com Halftime Report I'm Cassidy Hubbard enjoy the second half. Bring their perfect records and potent offenses to the Tostitos BCS National Championship game, January 10th on ESPN Radio. Does your roof need replacing, your house need cleaning, or maybe you're ready to update your kitchen? Big or small, whatever your home improvement need, now it's easy to find the right home pro for your project. Log on to fast.servicemagic.com. Service Magic is a free online resource with instant access to pre-screened remodelers, maids, handymen, roofers, and many other home contractors. Just go to fast.servicemagic.com. Service Magic has a network of licensed and insured contractors in hundreds of home improvement categories. If you need a painter, electrician, plumber, or any other home service, visit fast.servicemagic.com. It's easy and it's free, and it's the source to find neighbor-recommended contractors in your area. Now you can hire a pre-screened home pro with confidence. Go to fast.servicemagic.com. It's quick, it's free, and there's no obligation. Go to fast.servicemagic.com. That's fast.servicemagic.com. Mike and Mike in the morning on ESPN Radio. The Miami Dolphins don't want. Well, a high-intensity opening half. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. Georgia leads by four. And uh, much of the reason for that is the transition game, LaChina. Georgia outscored Kentucky in transition 8 nothing in the first half. It's really been about how fast Georgia gets from defense to offense. They play great defense, and then look, the vision to get the ball up the floor, but you also have to have a player that will get out and run. Here we see Meredith Mitchell picking it up, keeping her head up, and the post, the lone senior. Portia Phillips with the finish, and they just continue to pour it on and pour it on. Fast break points, eight for Georgia, zero for Kentucky at the half. Other stats from the first half, Phillips leading all scores with 10 points. Mitchell and Miller each had eight for the Lady Bulldogs, and then for the Wildcats, the scoring surprisingly, Dunlap's not on that list. Mathis, Drake, and Conright leading scores. When Dunlap did score, we saw her hit a jumper from the top of the key. I mean, it really riled the troops, so hopefully she can do more of that here in the second half because her scoring brings energy for this squad. And Kentucky has started the second half with a four-guard offense as Conright has her shot blocked. Drake not in the starting lineup at the beginning of the second half. She was a starter as a post player at the beginning of the game. 
And that just tells me that Matthew Mitchell wants to speed things up even more. He wants to probably pour on the defense, get more traps, and, and wants to put his fastest players out there on the court. Evans in the starting lineup. She has the basketball. The freshman from the Bronx who did not start the beginning of the game. Shot clock is down to five now. One-on-one -on -one by Evans, misses the three, and Phillips grabs the rebound. And there is a mismatch in the post right now. Kilo and Jasmine Hassel in transition. Okay, now they've got Conright on her. And some people may say that's still a mismatch, but Conright yeah. can play at the four position. Conright's only 5'8". And that's what happens when you go to that smaller lineup. Give up some size inside, but you're hoping that your quickness will make up for it. Andy Laners, four-time National Coach of the Year. Led this program to five Final Fours. Haven't been to one since 99, man. No one works the sidelines like Coach Landers. I'm telling you, every inch they give him on that sideline, he is using it throughout the game, working it with tremendous amount of energy. He's got to love his passion. I mean, all the years he's been doing this, he's just as passionate about it now as he was his first year at Georgia. No one scored yet here in the second half. Miller changes that. Kali to Miller, a three-pointer to open scoring in the second half. That is what you don't want to see on the offensive end from Georgia is Portia Phillips inside and Kalita Miller on the three. You have to make a decision. As a guard, are you going to help inside on Portia or are you going to get out on the three-point shot? Let's go back to Andy Landers real quick, show you the career he's had. Seven SEC championships. He's been to the NCAA tournament 27 times, 18 Sweet 16s, including last year, five Final Fours, and as I mentioned earlier tonight, a Hall of Famer. One of the game's greats. And 104% graduation rate. I think that's what really that impresses me the most. He has not had a four-year player fail to get her degree. And that is just significant in all the years. You'd probably say, why 104? Well, he's had a couple go come back and get extra degrees, so that should count, too. Georgia trying to build on its lead. That's the matchup that Matthew Mitchell wanted with Portia Phillips with Audia Mathis on her. Hassel can't handle the pass, turns it over. And for Matthew Mitchell, what, what do you say at halftime there? Well, really, I think he wants Keela Snowden to get more involved in the offense because Georgia has done a good job of limiting them to half court. So in the half court, you have to have a three-point shooter that can stretch the defense and take the focus off of Mathis and Dunlap inside. And Snowden only played five minutes in that first half and is averaging 12 points a game. So she's got to get more involved. Shot clock again under 10. There's Snowden. Misses the layup. Kentucky ranked 10th in the country. Georgia unranked, but has been at one point this year. James takes an extra step. She had the layup there. She was open, so that's a, an unforced error by James. She just got a little bit excited there, but if I saw Victoria Dunlap there at the rim waiting for me, I may have a little bit <laughs> step as well. Can't blame her. Kentucky has not scored here in the second half. We've played two and a half minutes. Conright long on the three. Mathis with the offensive rebound. Kentucky takes a lot more time in the half court. Very good defense right here by Georgia. Mitchell gets the steal, pulls up for the jumper. Help and recover, help and recover is what Georgia did well there defensively. You saw Kentucky hesitant on taking a shot. Mitchell commits the foul, her third. She's got three fouls for Georgia. O'Neal had to leave the game with four fouls for Kentucky. Those are the only two players really in any sort of foul trouble at the moment. Drake also has three for Kentucky. 
And that's an area that Matthew Mitchell's continuing to work with Jennifer O'Neill on. McDonald's All-American, but still just understanding the defensive end of the basketball. Well, it's been an off day so far for Dunlap. As she's short on that jumper, Dunlap has only taken three shots and made one of them as Drake comes in for the first time. But it's already been kind of a long season for Victoria, Victoria Dunlap. She's been pushed around. She's got, had a bruised knee. She left the game with a concussion. She left at least three, if not four, games with injuries this year. So just because of how hard and relentless she played, as you see there, she has taken some bumps. Dunlap got the offensive rebound fouled by Phillips on the way back up. As you watch here, Keely Snowden takes the shot. That's a good shot because you want her to help to spread the floor, make Georgia make some decisions. And right there, Dunlap with good positioning under the basket and good ball fake. Dunlap second in the conference in free throw shooting. I like what Coach Matthew Mitchell does with this team too, Chida. After most drills in the full two-hour practice, they will shoot free throws. Mm -hmm. So they'll shoot segments of free throws several times after drills. And that's the best time to shoot them is when you're tired. And you're tired the enti entire two hours at Kentucky practice. I can tell you, I got tired just watching. <laughs> I mean, he even he does a tremendous amount of footwork. He's yeah. a coach that believes in getting in a stance and staying in a defensive stance. And they work on that quite a bit. Even in shoot around, they've done that. Conrad knocks it out of bounds. The ball will stay with Georgia. Lady Bulldogs leading by five here in the second half, trying to break Kentucky's 25-game home win streak. Shot is off the mark by Ransford. Dunlap will try the three. And she has not shot very many on the season, but she comes into this game 40%, two of five from three-point land, just hit her third. James and Georgia trying to answer unsuccessfully. Mathis takes the charge. Time out, Georgia. The Wildcats riding a wave of support right now as Georgia desperately tries to protect the lead. Well, as to be expected, a close one here between Georgia and Kentucky. As Georgia leads by two. Matthew Mitchell, the head coach of Kentucky. What a turnaround he's brought to this program in his fourth season. You see, last year, best finish in school history. They won 28 games, went to the Elite Eight for the first time since the early 80s. And the future looks bright. This is no fluke. That last year wasn't the best year in this succession here. Well, Coach Mitchell said he wants to build this program again on the foundation of some principles that he believes in very strongly. Honesty, hard work, discipline. 
and he was rewarded actually and signed a, a new contract that pretty much rolls over every year. So Matthew Mitchell under here at Kentucky having a tremendous amount of success and you gotta love his personality. He's got a, he's got a TV show, he has a cookie show with his wife, and so he's got intensity, but he also likes to have a little fun. Matthew Mitchell, by the way, is also an Eagle Scout. Not a lot of people know that about Coach Mitchell. He comes from a scouting family, which tells you a lot about his discipline and character. Well, I know one thing. He, he's got one of the stronger accents out here. <laughs> or a coach from, he's from good old Mississippi, so you can hear that when he talks to his players and in his interviews. You're, call, you're saying someone has an accent? Come on. What? <laughs> I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. I better not have an accent. Dunlap on the drive. Offensive foul, however, as Dunlap Hit a nice three-pointer earlier, and this time tries to take it to the basket and picks up her third foul instead. And Georgia expecting Kentucky to try to move through Dunlap after she hit that shot. And Portia Phillips, she's come up with so many big plays so far this afternoon. Georgia has so far not surrendered the lead game early in the first half. Kentucky keeps making runs, and Georgia withstands them. Steal by Dunlap. Conright's pass goes out of bounds. Deflected off of Drake, and it'll be Georgia's basketball. Nice. Matthew Mitchell wanting his team to shoot the basketball. Put it up and got close enough to the rim there to take a shot. Now Conright commits the foul going for the steal, but will you take that foul? I would. I mean, it shows a lot of intensity from a very young player, a freshman, uh, against Jasmine, who obviously has her outmatched with experience. She's trying to get her team going. Kentucky with five team fouls. Georgia has five as well. Second half here in Lexington, Kentucky. And an offensive foul underneath as Armstrong commits the foul inside an illegal screen. And you will see Meredith Mitchell talking to the officials right now. She's trying to find out again because they keep getting that same foul call with the post player setting the screen for her. What exactly is going on? And that's a heads up leadership move by Mitchell. At least the third illegal screen that George has been called for. Dunlap against Phillips. Two of the SEC's premier players. And the ball will stay with Kentucky as Ransford couldn't save it. And that's the shot you want if you're Kentucky. You want Victoria Dunlap in the key, making a one-on-one -on -one move against Phillips, just not able to finish right there on that possession. Snowden loses it off of her hip. And Mitchell will pick it up and lay it in. Well, Mitchell sure has been good in transition today. Mitchell in double figures now scoring. Steal by James. Shot clock was under 10. Good defense by Georgia. I think they could sense that Kentucky didn't know what they really wanted to do there on that offensive set. Nice pass. Mitchell can't finish, but does draw the foul. And Meredith Mitchell with two back-to-back -back plays. I'll tell you this, Sam. As you watch her throughout SEC play at 6-1 at the guard spot, she can really make some things happen. Look at this here. Goes up against Drake. Wasn't able to finish, but... Boy, she's a matchup nightmare. Well, Mitchell has been coming on lately. Georgia trying to pull off the win here at Kentucky, leading by four. There's timeout on the floor.
Lady Bulldogs leading by four, 13 23 left to play here in the second half. Well, the Kentucky men's team is here at the game today as well. There's a lot of cross support between the men's and women's basketball teams. In fact, their offices are right across the hall from each other. The men lost a heartbreaker to Georgia yesterday, and the women are trying to avoid that same fate. I remember last year doing a Kentucky game, and John Wall at the time saying uh, how much he liked watching Adia Mathis play. So these guys love watching the, the ladies play. Well, they tweet each other all the time. I'm on Twitter, and I've got John Wall on there, and him and Keela Snowden go back and forth, and he goes back and <laughs> forth with Amber Smith. So the support needs a lot. I'll tell you that from the men's programs in this country that support the women and vice versa. You know, and it, and it seems to be increasing as the year goes on. It's really, really great to see. Mitchell makes one of two. Now, Kentucky, one of the few programs in the country that has its men's and women's program in the top ten. Mathis with the drive and layup. We're in Memorial Coliseum here in Lexington, Kentucky. I'm Sam Gore along with former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson. Kentucky has a 25-game home win streak in this building. Trying to stay in the top ten. The drive and basket by Mitchell. And that's a good read by Georgia. Carly Morrow just outmatched there with foot speed when it comes to Mitchell, and she recognizes it goes to the hole. I like Audia Mathis, though. That last move by her, I think they need to try to move the offense through her and Dunlap more here in the second half. Dunlap gives it up to Henderson, who gets the basket. And Mathis is going to pick up Jasmine James full court and harass her, and try to make it difficult for her to get things going here for the Bulldogs. Kentucky within three, and Henderson gets the steal. Nice pass again. Mathis doesn't finish. And instead, a foul called against Mathis. And that is a good option, and Audia Mathis would normally make that basket, and that's just a frustration foul afterwards. With the energy out of the timeout by Kentucky, you can feel them trying to get some momentum here. Well, you said she'd normally make it. What happened there? Why'd she miss it? Well, I think she just took it too strong, expecting more contact. You know, when you're expecting the contact of Georgia, they've been all over them all afternoon, but right there she was clear and just overshot the layup. Phillips posts up Dunlap. Armstrong. Evans. No one told her Mitchell was behind her. And one thing that Hugh Mitchell said he wanted this team to do was help each other defensively. He didn't feel like against Arkansas they did that. Arkansas just scored at will on some possessions. They had 40 points in the paint off of layups, and the help defense wasn't getting there. Double dribble by Miller. It'll give the ball back to Kentucky. 11.06 left to play. It's a tight one. Kentucky trying to overcome Georgia.
Kentucky trying to get back in this before it's too late. Trailing by three with 11.06 left to play. Well, later tonight, ESPNU delivers a special version of the experts to get everybody ready for the BCS National Championship. They'll provide unfiltered conversation about college football's marquee event, the experts BCS National Championship on ESPNU tonight at 10.30. Remember, the National Championship comes your way tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. Number one, Auburn against number two, Oregon. Looking forward to that. Here's some numbers. You see how close these two are statistically. And it is going to be a fun night tomorrow night. And you can get the full preview later this night on ESPNU at 1030. Adia Mathis and the Kentucky Wildcats. They keep getting close to China, but they just have not been able to overcome this Georgia lead. They haven't been able to turn the corner, and now Matthew Mitchell is going to make a move that he made in the Duke game that I thought really helped their offense, and that's putting Adia Mathis at the point guard. I told you, she played one through four tonight. Mathis feeds Dunlap, who misses the shot. Henderson. And Dunlap with the offensive rebound is fouled, trying to go back up with it. Well, even if Kentucky were to somehow lose this game, the moral victory here would be how hard the Wildcats seem to be playing tonight. The effort, and I like B. Henderson. She's been going after, again, voted most improved over the year, who they thought would be. She's been most improved over the course of this game. And Dunlap just continues to work here, and that's an important foul because for Meredith Mitchell, that is her fourth. Yep. And Mitchell, the leading scorer in the game right now with 13 points. Dunlap looking for her ninth. She's been perfect at the free throw line, four for four. Hassel will check back in for Georgia. Armstrong heads to the bench. So Kentucky within one with 10.45 left to play. Remember, Kentucky has this 25-game home win streak on the line. And this is what Kentucky does best. They're going to pressure in the full court. When you see Dunlap on the ball, they're getting ready to bring the heat. Kentucky hasn't lost three in a row since the 08-09 season. They come into this game having dropped two this week to Duke and Arkansas. Shot clock under 10. Jasmine Hassel's in trouble. And a timeout taken by the Georgia bench. The shot clock is at six, a 30-second timeout taken by the Lady Bulldogs. Very good timeout here by Coach Landers, and we mentioned the four fouls on Meredith Mitchell, and that's important because she's been playing some ball here today, Sam. So impressed. She started off the game being aggressive, and I think that was key for her. Hit a couple shots, and she's just gotten loose. And Coach Landers will tell you she is one that gets it. She's improved 100% every year from her freshman year to her sophomore year till now. A junior, the only junior on this team. Well, Mitchell's really become the X factor because she probably does not show up on the scouting report yet because it's still so early, and yet she's having this breakout season right now. So she's able to kind of slide in under the radar right now and catch teams off guard. And she's got 13 points, five rebounds, two blocks, three steals, and she's been guarding Audia Mathis all night. So she's putting some work. Yeah, last weekend against South Carolina, 12 points, eight rebounds, and three steals. Georgia with a one-point lead. Shot clock. It expires. Remember, there were only six seconds on the shot clock when they came out of that 30-second timeout. And Andy Lander says, my fault. He may not have reminded his team of that. I, I don't know why else he would say my fault. And he may have called a play that required more time than what was left on the shot clock there, Sam. Well, Kentucky will have the chance to take the lead. So close. Love the effort by Victoria Dunlap on the offensive board. She had zero O boards at the half. Now she just got finished. Miller does finish. And Georgia rebuilds the lead to three. And Kalita has been able to get to the rim whatever she wants. I mean, this entire afternoon, the freshman has attacked the rim with aggressiveness. Dunlap. Dunlap's got seven of Kentucky's 11 points this half. 
And now we'll have the chance to add to it as she draws the foul from Phillips. And that is a good call. Victoria Dunlap is one of the better four players. From the top of the key, she can sweep and go because of her foot speed and really get to the rim, which is what she did there. Turn back middle and got fouled. Originally a two-sport star at Kentucky. She was one of the better high jumpers in the SEC her freshman year. In fact, she can dunk a basketball. She's got a great vertical leap. And the, the interesting thing about Dunlap is her balance. I mean, her jump is tenacious, but she's so soft in her finish. You know, I mean, she can bounce around with the best of them, but when she finishes, it's always a soft touch. Snowden, Henderson, and a three-point play for Kentucky. We're tied at 43. Crowd chanting defense, getting into this game, and the freshman, Dalita Miller, tough shot. Georgia has answered every time Kentucky has threatened. Evans with the miss, offensive rebound misses again, and a rebound by Hassel. Kentucky is getting the second and third look on the offensive end. They've just got to finish it around the rim. Miller throws another one up. Out of bounds off Henderson. It'll stay with Georgia. Georgia trying to fight back this challenge by Kentucky and pull off the upset here in Lexington. Phillips has it blocked by Dunlap. And then a foul committed by Miller. As Miller reached in just as the break was about to start. Defensive momentum for Kentucky. That's what that kind of play does, especially when it's Dunlap. And Matthew Mitchell is, is trying to get his senior leader to be more vocal, to really show that energy. She does it through her play. She's not a player that has to say a lot, not as quiet as Mathis, but she just does it in, in her actions. And, and Dunlap really working hard here to keep her team in this game. It is unusual that your two top players are such mild-mannered individuals as Mathis at the free throw line. <laughs> Mathis makes the first, a 66% free throw shooter this season, but tonight hasn't missed. And that is an area that Adia said she would like to improve on that in her three-point shooting, and she has uh, from her freshman season to now. They're tied again. Seventh tie of the game. Kentucky, though, hasn't led since the 12-38 mark in the first half. You see Kentucky going to a zone look here, going to switch things up defensively. They're going to zone Georgia. Miller, yes! Colleen to Miller. We've seen her score in penetration, this time at three. Dunlap backs in and travels. Now, not a popular call here in Memorial Coliseum. The Wildcats just can't seem to get that lead. Georgia back in front by three with 7.59 to play. Kalita Miller with the heartbreaker moments ago.
ESPN News exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Find an agent or get a quote at statefarm.com. And by Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. Well, the nation's premier college basketball conference, the SEC, is seeing another fine battle here in Lexington between Georgia and Kentucky. The Lady Bulldogs lead the Wildcats by three, 7.59 left to play. I'm Sam Gore, joined by former Wake Forest standout LaChina Robinson. And I am looking forward to the last eight minutes of this one, LaChina. Boy, have things heated up. This has been an exciting back and forth. Momentum turns and churns and points scored and steals and turnovers. Everything we expected, Sam, in SEC basketball. Armstrong is able to throw it. No, she's not. She loses it out of bounds. I thought she got it off Snowden in that corner, but she did not. And so that's going to be a Georgia turnover, the 23rd of the game by the Lady Bulldogs. And Coach Landers, I think, wanted Kalita Miller to be a little more aggressive when she got the ball in her hands at the top of the key. She ended up passing it up. Freshman, don't be afraid. You're balling out there. Play. <laughs> There's Snowden. Keila Snowden has now made at least a three in 26 straight games. And she, she ties the score. She had 15 points against Duke, struggled against Arkansas, but Keila Snowden, just when they need her, hits a huge three-pointer. Good pass inside. Missed by Armstrong, rebound by Henderson. Everyone in the game right now for Kentucky is an upperclassman. No freshman on the floor for them right now. Kentucky has not led since 14 to 12. And at least for now, that's going to continue. On offense, Kentucky looking for some answers. Great screen. Georgia gets there a little too late and Snowden, she is always ready to shoot. I tell people all the time, she's a pure two. She knows when her feet are behind the three-point line, get ready for the ball. Georgia trying to retake the lead. They've been able to do it every time Kentucky's made a run. Miller. Castle with the offensive rebound. Phillips. Portia Phillips with the three-pointer. Portia Phillips said if Victoria Dunlap can step out, I can step out too. I'm going to even up this star watch here to, from the three-point line. 13 points now for Phillips. And Georgia back in front by three. Dunlap and Phillips, they've got a nice little battle going on right now. That's where you need to go late in the game is to your seniors, but Kalita Miller showing she can carry some of the load too, turns the ball over right there. Miller stepped out of bounds with her back foot. And so Kentucky will get the ball back with 534 left to play, looking to tie again with a three-pointer. Eight ties, five lead changes, but again, Kentucky hasn't led since the 1238 mark in the first half. Dunlap. Misses again. And Mathis there to clean it up. Audio Mathis is just putting together plays against play here right now. Only a sophomore, but defense and offense, she is carrying the load. I like the way this kid is playing. Mathis with 14 points, Kentucky within one. And that is relentless. That's the hustle. That's the passion that Coach Mitchell was talking about. And Armstrong steps out of bounds. Watch this. Dunlap with the air ball. But Audia Mathis does not give up. Give up. She hits the floor. But wait, you think she's out, but she comes back and scores it. Terrific sequence for her. Georgia takes a timeout as Armstrong had just turned it over before we went to that replay. A 30-second timeout taken by the Lady Bulldogs. 
Well, ESPN is your home for college hoops. We continue our coverage on ESPNU Tuesday night. It's an SEC ACC doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Auburn will meet Kentucky. And then the Wolfpack of NC State take on Boston College at 9 Eastern. Again, both those games coming your way Tuesday night on ESPNU. A men's SEC ACC doubleheader Tuesday night beginning at 7 on ESPNU. is the men's team here at Kentucky. Fresh off a loss to Georgia, an upset, which is why Georgia on the men's side is 1-0 in conference play, and Kentucky's 0-1. Kentucky hanging around at number 11 and uh, hoping to have a win Tuesday night. Kentucky has lost two in a row. They haven't lost three in a row since the 08-09 season. They're falling to nationally ranked Duke in Arkansas this week. Dunlap tried to create something. One official unsighted. And the other official says that it went out of bounds off Kentucky, so Georgia will get it. And Georgia has been really playing physical with Dunlap the entire game, and she is starting to wear down a little bit around the basket, just missing some shots that she would normally make late in the game. Miller, yes! Collie to Miller again, buries a three, this time from the other corner. The reigning SEC freshman of the week is going for week two. Yeah. <laughs> three three-pointers in this game, and Georgia has a four-point lead. Mathis on the way to the basket is fouled en route. And the foul's on Jasmine James. Fourth foul on James with four minutes left to play. So Georgia now has four fouls on James and Mitchell. And that is a bulk of your experience. James, again, playing some at the one, but mostly off the ball at the two position last season quite a bit. I mean, averaging 30, more than 35 points a game. And then also Meredith Mitchell, the only junior. So... You get really young really quick when those two get in foul trouble. Georgia trying to rebuild a sizable lead. Now it's at four. Kentucky had tied it. Mitchell overshoots it. But Hassel's in the right place at the right time. Good rebound and finish by Hassel. And Matthew Mitchell looking for a timeout. And finally Mathis does. So timeout taken by Kentucky. They had tied the score, had this crowd of over 5,000 rocking in here. And Georgia has turned the tide and regained the momentum, leading by six. 3.32 left to play. Georgia beating South Carolina last week has made the most of its by on Thursday. They come in here ready to play here in Lexington. Well, and if you're Coach Landers, you're saying we really have to stay mentally focused. They had two possessions where they had someone step out of bounds. Now they've got some foul trouble. So this is where he's gathering the troops saying, hey, we got to get together. And if you're Matthew Mitchell, they have got to get scoring out of those sets. They're getting the looks they want, just not putting it in. So we'll see what happens in the last three and a half. Yeah, Kentucky's actually shot 14 more field goals than Georgia, but shooting wise, they've made six fewer. Kentucky with 28% shooting tonight, Georgia 51%. So Kentucky's getting a lot of looks, they're just not finishing like you said. And that is gonna be the fifth foul on Meredith Mitchell. Mitchell fouls out with 13 points, six rebounds, a couple of assists. That is a huge loss now for Georgia. And when you look at that roster of one senior, one junior, there are some underclassmen that are going to have to grow up pretty fast. So mark it down. 3.28 left to play. Mitchell fouls out. We'll return to Lexington in a moment.
Well, Georgia trying to hang on, but Meredith Mitchell with 13 points has just fouled out of the game. We'll see how that affects the rest of this game for the Lady Bulldogs, who lead it with 328 left to play. And what an exciting time of year on the ESPN family of networks for women's college basketball. Next Saturday, we'll stay in the SEC. Vanderbilt and Tennessee will renew their rivalry at 8 Eastern on ESPN. The very next day, January 16th, the Red River rivalry, Texas and Oklahoma at 1.30 Eastern on ESPNU. And then UConn will meet North Carolina in a battle of top 10 women's teams on January 17th, which would be on the Monday night, 7 Eastern on ESPN2. So big weekend next weekend, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, huge games in women's college basketball on the ESPN family of networks. Should be very exciting matchups. Both Vandy and Tennessee with some talented young players. I know I've enjoyed watching Megan Simmons play this year, in particular for Tennessee. Yeah. And um, that Oklahoma Texas game will be good too. Whitney Hand back in the lineup for Oklahoma. They won their Big 12 opener. And of course, Gil Guestin Cordes' team ready for Big 12 play. It's going to be a tough knockout drag out in the Big 12. Well, speaking of Connecticut, Castine Evans is from Salem, Connecticut. She's the first player from that state to play for Kentucky makes the free throw there Kentucky within four Miller on the break in and out and that has to be the first basket that Kalita Miller has missed in transition today Dunlap does not miss in transition for Kentucky and that's exactly what Matthew Mitchell wants his team to do on a make or a miss. He doesn't care. Get the ball and go straight to the rim. Make them stop you. Only the second made basket, or made, excuse me, third made basket of the night for Dunlap. But she has 12 points. She's made five or six free throws. This is where Georgia has been so composed, withstanding Kentucky's runs. One on the shot clock, Armstrong misses. And Dunlap, a little shaken up. She may have caught a cramp. She uh, came out of that rebound hobbling. And uh, obviously doesn't want to come out of the game. And yeah, she's stretching out her quad. And I think you may be right. Let's see if we can pick it up. Dunlap, number 34, bottom of your screen. Great defense there by Snowden, who gets it, the shot from the back. You see Dunlap goes out of bounds there. She, again, has been out of several contests. Has had to leave early. She's had a concussion, a knee bruise. I mean, I can't count the number of games this year. She's got knocked around, and she's a warrior. And she plays practically the entire game for Kentucky. And again, a finish. Great pass by Mathis. Kentucky's tied it. And you are seeing why Audia Mathis is on the preseason Naismith list. It's her versatility. She's now running point. Phillips stuck. And a timeout taken by Georgia. Well, Dunlap has been coming up big for Kentucky, as you might expect. The preseason player of the year for the Wildcats here in the SEC. And Nadia Mathis does a great job of keeping her head up, but Dunlap waiting and ready. Great finish there in transition. And right here again, the one-two punch for Kentucky. Mathis to Dunlap. Great pass and the finish there. Dunlap up to 14 points now to go along with her eight rebounds. And we cannot forget that last season in Athens, this matchup went into overtime and was decided by a three-point basket by Jasmine James at the top of the key. So it's 56 all, Sam, but hey, we this is going to be a tight one down the stretch. It actually, actually House had 27 points in that game. So Georgia had to do a lot to pull that one out. Let's take a look at our Star Watch update. Phillips and Dunlap, these numbers a little more even now. They were very lopsided in Phillips' favor at halftime. And that's called halftime talk with Coach. <laughs> Tied at 56. Two minutes to play here in Lexington. Dunlap is wincing, but she's staying in the game. She is tough. She's a warrior. She will not, she will not give up. And 
Miller, NBA three. Wow. That's a pretty good looking freshman. <laughs> Almost from a seated position on the bench. Way out there. And Georgia leads by three. Dunlap draws the foul on Hassel. Wow. Correction, the foul is on James, which is worse for Georgia because now James has fouled out. James undersized and got in there underneath the defense, committed the foul. So Jasmine James and Meredith Mitchell have both fouled out for Georgia. Mitchell fouled out with 328 left to play, and now James fouling out with 129 left. And this is huge as you look out on the floor right now. You have Kalita Miller and Renika Ransford, the two freshmen, out in a game that's right now you're up three with a minute and a half, but on the road, too, in a very tough place. Growing up, huh? <laughs> well, Dunlap trying to get Kentucky to within one. Dunlap is... Six of seven from the free throw line today. And now seven of eight and does pull Kentucky within one as James left to sit on the bench. Length of the floor pass. And the layup is good by Ransford. Wow, heads up play there by Georgia. Ransford gets back. And you knew Kentucky was going to come with the pressure up front. And Georgia just goes over the top. And now a steal. This is Miller. Georgia, again, it, it's, we keep saying it over and over again, but it bears repeating it. Georgia has withstood every Kentucky run today. And that that you just saw Kalita Miller do, back the ball out, understanding time and situation, was big uh, for Ransford. a freshman. Ransford got caught, nowhere to go, commits the travel. That last play, though, where they threw it the length of the floor down, and that's just a smart play. You can tell that Coach Landers and his staff have watched Kentucky's defense. They know they're going to come with the pressure, especially in a tight game. They go over the top and get the easy basket. Second time they've been able to do that in the last couple of minutes. Ransford turned it over. That's why Kentucky has it at the moment. Under a minute to play, three-point game. And a foul called. Dunlap will go back to the free throw line. As the foul called on Phillips. But uh, Dunlap, of course, will be shooting two. 33.7 seconds left to play, and Kentucky's trailing by three. And Dunlap hadn't taken any free throws at the half. Zero for zero from the free throw line. And now it's her ninth. she is eight of nine from the line. That's the difference for her in the second half and where she has really stepped up her aggressiveness and going to the offensive board. She had zero of those two at the half. In and out. Kentucky trails by two. Georgia with a two-point lead. 30 seconds to play. And in the backcourt, Mathis commits the foul. Her third foul. And Georgia will go to the free throw line, but not before a timeout is taken by Kentucky. 30-second timeout taken by the Wildcats. Strategy-wise, where are we now, LaChina? Well, Kentucky had to foul right there to keep Georgia from just running the clock out. So right now, they're going to try to foul and see what Georgia can do from the free throw line. They're going to try to get it in, get a quick score, expect Kentucky to try to get straight to the rim. Georgia's going to have to keep an eye on them in transition. Kentucky has a 25-game home winning streak on the line. They haven't lost three in a row since the 8 9 season, falling to Duke and Arkansas this week. One timeout remaining for each team. Georgia's in the double bonus. Kentucky not yet in the bonus. And if you were talking to Matthew Mitchell, I mean, though he was frustrated with his team's effort at Arkansas, much better showing even already tonight, he would say it's about being a better team in March. You know, the SEC prepares you.
for what their goal is, and he has said it over and over again to get to the national championship. Ransford steps out of bounds. The third time today that a Georgia player has stepped out of bounds to give it back to Kentucky. And that is huge. A great call by Matthew Mitchell to pressure the freshman. You got two freshmen for Georgia in this game right now. He says, let's see how they perform against the pressure here as we try to get a foul or a steal. Andy Landers uh, frustrated. He, I mean, from a coach's point of view, I mean, you know your players know the dimensions of the court, but they've gotten themselves in trouble tonight uncharacteristically stepping out of bounds. But that's what Kentucky does. I saw them do that against Duke. Chloe Wells, the point guard for Duke, stepped out of bounds, and it was just kind of like, how do you do that? But that constant pressure just makes you move a little closer to the end line, makes you, you know, do things that you wouldn't normally do, and it just kind of builds throughout the course of the game. Dunlap's numbers from the first to second half. The SEC Player of the Year stepping up here in the second half, but Kentucky in this timeout down by two with 24 seconds remaining Kentucky has no more timeouts left Georgia with one more so with no timeouts Matthew Mitchell is going to have to get a mouthful in here in terms of what he wants to do on a make on a miss and then even going back the other way because there's a lot of time here left in this game and if you're tuning in to watch college hockey Colgate and Princeton will be up next here on ESPNU, but what a great finish we've got in this SEC women's basketball game. Kentucky again trying to protect a 25 game home win streak. Georgia though was the last team to beat Kentucky in this building, and that was back in 2009. It'll be Kentucky's basketball, 24.5 seconds left, the Wildcats down by two. Mathis has it blocked by Phillips. And then Armstrong is called for the travel. So Kentucky will get it back. And that's a great defensive. Watch the switch there on the screen. So Portia Phillips is on Mathis and gets the block. A three would give Kentucky the lead. Under 10 to play. Jump ball and the possession arrow gives it to Georgia. Portia Phillips, the Sloan senior for Georgia, coming up with two huge defensive plays. Georgia takes its final timeout. 7.7 .7 seconds left. Georgia will have the basketball with a two-point lead, but they'll have to get it the length of the floor. Phillips there with the block and then comes back and ties it up on the perimeter. These are two perimeter players that Portia Phillips had to make a play on. Watch this here. Mathis. Gets behind her, and that's just a clean block there by Portia. She let out a little noise there, too, with that one, Sam. <laughs> and then you see there. Arm Armstrong with the turnover at the end of this as she couldn't maintain possession of the ball. And then again, Keila Snowden there. Phillips on her and just gets her with the tie-up. Gets her hands on the ball, and that's the aggressive defense that the Georgia Bulldogs are known for. No more timeouts. Georgia will have the ball. 7.7 .7 seconds left. Trying to break this 25 game home win streak of Kentucky. They ended TCU's 27 game home court win streak earlier this season. So the Lady Bulldogs would be known as the streak breakers this year. And in talking to Coach Landers yesterday, I said, would you say that that TCU win on the road, I mean, a tough team getting that win, was that a turning point of, so of sorts? He said his team had not yet had their turning point. Well, guess what? This might just be it. And You've had two fa two starters foul out and senior making big, big, big plays. Could get Georgia back in the top 25. They fell out when they lost to Southern Cal earlier this year. 7.7 7 seconds left. Georgia has the ball leading by two. And a foul by Mathis. Fouls Kali to Miller. Actually, check that. And she fouled Ransford. Ransford got loose and was grabbed by Mathis. And Mathis now with four fouls. A one and one for Ransford, the freshman from Washington, D.C. She's an 83% free throw shooter. Missed the front end. Kentucky. 
going for the win. Georgia pulls off the upset. Mathis can't tie the score at the buzzer. Georgia has ended Kentucky's 25 game home court win streak and goes to 2 0 in the SEC. For LaChina Robinson, I'm Sam Gore. Thanks for joining us, everyone. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Stay tuned for college hockey, Colgate and